Hello, welcome to this video where we look at the method of volume by washer. Just a couple slides talking about the concept and then hopefully we'll get a chance to do a couple examples as well. My name is Nikai Rimmer and I'm here to uh, guide you through this. Hopefully you can um, understand. If not, just to make sure you ask me questions in the comments down below and I'll be happy to help. So um, we've seen already the concept of volume by slicing and we saw two techniques in this series of videos we saw the technique of cross sections we also saw the technique of the disc method now we move on and we step up the difficulty level where we talk about the washer method i want you to know that it really is not a new concept it is exactly like the disc method except it is a disc minus another disc you see, a washer shape is an annular shape. And so it's like a donut. And, and what we have then that makes this different when we didn't have it before is the fact that the region is removed away from the axis of rotation. And so that causes a hole, a gaping hole, a gap that then when you rotate will be a hole in the shape. And therefore you'll have then the ability to find the volume, it'll be just by doing um, an outside disc minus an inside disc. All right, uh, let's start off with uh, the axis of rotation being horizontal, something like the x-axis, maybe not exactly the x-axis, maybe y equals some constant. And you have some region that you're rotating in the x-y plane. Here's a picture, for example. And so, I have this region between these two parabolas and I like to rotate it about the x-axis. Well, in doing that, there's a discernible gap between the region and the axis. When you rotate that, you'll get a donut type shape. And so your task then is to figure out the outer disc by finding the outer radius. The outer radius is a distance that goes from the axis through your region to the outer curve represented by this orange distance here. And since we are slicing perpendicular to, the ex, uh, perpendicular to the axis of rotation, then when you have a vertical slice, it gets moved from left to right. Therefore, what you're looking for then is as X changes, you wanna know what the radius is. We have the radius that is designated as the outer radius as a function of x, r out of x, I call it. But then we have to take out the middle. And so we have to subtract out the same kind of action happening where we have to find this other radius, which is the inner radius from the axis of rotation, just up to the region, just up to the inner curve, represented by this purple distance r in of x, another function of x, because it's a vertical slice. All right, here's what the 3D picture looks like. It's kind of haphazardly drawn there. I don't know if you can see it in the darker part, though. Let me highlight it with this yellow. And so you rotate that, and you have this gap in the middle, kind of like a bead. But with all slicing, the volume then is found by integrating the area formula. And with the vertical slices in x, and so we'll have a pi r squared for the outer disk minus a pi r squared for the inner disk, but not doing them as two separate integrals. We can do them all as one. Outer radius squared minus the inner radius squared. That's what you integrate. Washer method with the horizontal axis. What's going to change when you do a vertical axis? Just a variable in which you integrate. So here's an example of a picture with uh, a vertical axis that's not this different from the actual y axis removed away. And we want to find the radii. Well, what we're going to notice here is that the the slice happens perpendicular to the axis rotation. So the slice is horizontal. And then it gets moved upward. That's a y integral. Okay. And 
just like before though, to find the radius, there's two of them, they're radii, one of the radi one radius is the distance from the axis through the region, that's the outer radius here in orange, and then we go um, and find the distance from the axis just up to the region, that's the inner radius in purple here. Okay. This is just a picture, uh, we won't go ahead and calculate this, just want to set it up for you. <coughs> and so we have, yeah, the volume is uh, A of Y, and you integrate that. Integrate A of Y dy from some low Y equals A to some high Y equals B. Outer disk minus an inner disk, pi R squared minus a pi R squared, where the outer one is the larger one. So let's see an example. Don't think we'll have time to do two, but we'll do at least one example. And so let's take a curve where we have a parabola, y equals 4 minus x squared. It keeps going, but we're going to stop it at minus 2 and 2 because we're cut off by the line y equals 0, who is the x-axis. And so our region is between those two, under the parabola, above the x-axis. It's not shaded there, but that's your region. And you are going to rotate about the line y equals negative 2. Two radii you need to find. Why is it washer and not disk? Because we're not, um, in the previous question, we did rotate this region about the x-axis. But now there's this gap between the region and the axis. When we rotate, there's a hole. The 3D picture is down below. And so, two radii. The outside radius goes from the axis through the region. Now, when you start to remove your axis away from the x or y axis, then the radii are found by doing an addition or a subtraction based on the location of it in relationship to the axis. When your region is above the axis of rotation like this, and you go to rotate that, then there's an addition of distances here. There's a distance who gets you back to the x-axis, and then there's the distance off the x-axis. There's the 2, and then you add on the 4 minus x squared. Honestly, when you're trying to find radii, what you could do is upper minus lower when it's vertical, right minus left when it's horizontal. The upper is the y minus x squared, of uh, four, 4 minus x squared, and the lower is the negative 2. And you get the same thing, 4 minus x squared minus a negative 2 is the same thing as what we have here, 4 plus uh, 4 minus x squared plus a 2. Okay. Simplifying that, we can take the 2 and 4, add them together, we get 6. The inside radius. Go from the axis just up to the region. And imagine that thing moving now. These guys don't just stay there. They move throughout from left to right in this case. So it doesn't change though. Right? It'll always be the same. The inner radius is that distance from the axis of rotation up to the x-axis. It's going to be 2. And so you're all set. Um, like any other problems that we've done, we have the formula. We go through the setup. We spend most of our time on the setup. When it comes to the execution of the integral, I'm going to leave it to you. But um, here it is. We take the outside radius of 6 minus x squared. We have to square that first. Take the inside radius and square that and then subtract. And it's at that point that we actually integrate. But what about the bounds? What's the smallest x and what's the largest x as you move from left to right? It's the intersection between these two functions, the x-axis and the y equals 4 minus x squared parabola. It's a 2 and minus 2. All right, so pause the video and work out the, the answer here. If you need to, you can um, take a look at these uh, the steps here that I put on the slide. But that's an integration that I'm sure you could do. Okay. All right, great. So here we are. And the answer to the question ends up as 384 pi over 5. Now, if you didn't get that, go back and check my steps. You don't have to do it the way I do it. But I take advantage of um, even and odd functions when I integrate from minus A to A. All right. So that's example 9. Um, we'll come back with example 10, a very um, um, different question than this. But um, after that, then we can look at shell method and we'd have covered everything by then.
All right. Thank you very much. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, and um, I'm here to help you. Please um, let me know if, if you have any questions. Um, comment down below. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye.